All right, we are live and functioning. All systems are go. Yay. Uh, <laughs> Time machine is ready. <laughs> uh, we are here to discuss my pick, hence it being on my channel, Hexwood by Diana Wynne Jones. And uh, the prompt for dressing up was time travel. Mm -hmm. I went robot. I I forgot what the prompt was. <laughs> <laughs> I, which turned out to be appropriate for the book. So, so I actually think well, this that's is why I picked it. Because I was like, I'm just going for something for the book. But I'm like, yeah. technically, I could be a time machine. Yeah. Also, a functioning Ooh. robot, I would think, would have to be a guest from the future. So that's inherently time travel. There you yeah. Go. We're stretching <laughs> it. I kind of always do that with everything. I kind of stretch my... Well, interpretation it's of it it's more fun <laughs> if we all have different interpretations because then we have variety yeah doctor who would have been a good choice i'm uh, like oh shit i should have done that <laughs> well, <laughs> then we would have just been the same yeah yeah i figure i'm like going anachronistic like some modern person who's traveled in the, to the past yes <laughs> i'm indiana jones trying to blend into a ren fair nice. and i am the 11th doctor <laughs> Bow ties are cool. Bow ties are cool. I almost bought a fez for this, but I was like, when literally ever? Like, I, I could see you. myself reusing the bow tie for something. Not I the mean, fez. You're not going to reuse a fez? Come on. <laughs> Maybe if I dressed up as Abu the monkey at some point. Well, you know I what? feel like you have 2024, fez. new you, new year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it could be your new thing. I mean, if you have a fez, I feel like it's incumbent upon you to find the occasion to wear it. That does seem to be what happened with Matt Smith was once the fez became a thing, then it needed to continue to be a thing because if you have a fez. <laughs> like you're not just going to have that in Fezzes the back are of your cool. closet. You got you to gotta work work to incorporate it's a it's a commitment to that decision yeah yes. i could put no cows would fit inside the fez oh that would be very cute <laughs> but it, yeah. and if i put a teeny tiny cow sized fez on her first the fez would die and then i would die <laughs> <laughs> okay hold on i might go black for a second because i'm still having one technical it's issue but i'm still up. here okay Dreamyard yeah. knows that we are talking about um, the reality of our world that's been hidden from us, and they are conspiring to keep us from sharing the truth of what's going on. So, that's true. That's true. yeah, let's go with that. The truth is out there. <laughs> All right. Well, Hexwood by Diana Wynne Jones is is a book, and I understand why it defies um, blurb. It defies summary. It defies genre. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I know that Neil Gaiman at some point like was kind of when I forget if it was like a foreword or a speech or whatever it was, but he was trying to describe Hexwood and was like, you just kind of have to go with it. <laughs> well, I, I will say, I believe that this is dedicated to him. Yeah. This anyway, it's dedicated so. to him and to my knowledge <laughs> or it's um, and thank you very kindly, Jessica. Um, Thanks, Jessica. If, uh, yeah, I, I think not only was it dedicated to him, I think she also said that he was an inspiration. I wasn't sure if it was for a specific character, and if so, which one? Because when I learned this, I hadn't read it yet, so I had no like context for that information. But I believe he was also as an, an inspiration for something in it. Okay. Pume? Or Yam? Or... I, I don't know. I kept trying to, like, as I was reading it, I was like, are you Gaiman? Are you Gaiman? Are you Gaiman? Are you all Gaiman? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe Mordian. Maybe he's Mordian. Maybe again. Maybe Just filled with Mordian. unequivocal rage for no reason. Maybe that's Neil Gaiman. Or maybe he's <laughs> maybe he's Anne Anna, whatever her name Anne. is. Anne. You know, let's not be limited in our. <laughs> yeah. What was her? What was her other name? We're doing spoilers, We're... by the way, everyone. So oh, yeah, we haven't yeah. read Hexwood. Um, I don't know if yet if we anybody here would recommend it or not, but we are going to be spoiling it. So if you would like to read it unspoiled then here's your warning yeah so the irony of Piggy yeah because i think this is only available physically unfortunately oh really i know yeah. it sucked really bad <laughs> oh. that you know can we just segue into like there are so many of these i feel this particularly with elizabeth uh, elizabeth murray pope like you can hardly find them at all from the 90s and there's these like great classic YA and middle grade books that I feel like are disappearing from the world and I'm like yeah. come on guys like <laughs> well because Diana Wynne Jones isn't exactly an obscure author no. either no Owl's Moving Castle 
how, which is one of my all time oh. favorite books. I, Not, like, I mean, I haven't read the book, but I like she's the movie. a she's a well known <laughs> author with a lot of beloved books, and this is dedicated to a well known author who yeah. has like spoken like in its favor and praised it. So it's like, what the heck? <laughs> well, I had to order it from a UK bookstore. Oh, you can definitely really? get it on Amazon. I got mine on Amazon. Yeah, they when I was trying to get it, it was like out of print, and you could only get it oh. like used. And it was yeah. expensive. So I found it a lot cheaper on um Well, in Blockbox. general, I find buying things. Yeah, now they're doing like the print-on-demand version. So. That might explain why mine. No, 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 no. I, I do have the right. Well, maybe. This is the first edition that I just already oh. had. I don't know. Ooh. I got it from Amazon. But it does have, looks like one of those, you know, print-on-demand. Because it has this little yeah. label on the back. I have that but too. Yeah, it, is, uh, it was from the UK. And the UK one was cheaper. So. Oh. Well, oh. la, la, la. we all have the same book. I don't know why we're trying to decide what it is. Yeah, Except for Lana. Lana has the, Lana. the super. So yeah, this one nasty. has Mordian on the cover, I believe. Oh, oh, whoa. Well, now I know why this was not one that I read as a as a teen, because that cover would not have said. <laughs> but there's this, all the fun shenanigans down here. You know, this is the Tin know, Man but, from. Oh, there's some uh, really weird covers for this book. I don't know if you've looked. <laughs> no, but I can imagine why there's weird covers for this book I mean, because yeah. it's kind of a weird. How book. do you choose what to put on the cover? There's a lot of options. <laughs> yeah. Know. So I like to think that this is Neil Gaiman in the future. <laughs> Our overlord, Neil Gaiman, <laughs> yes. looking like a skull. Our only hope, Neil Gaiman. <laughs> so I didn't know that this book was so hard to get. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I already had it, and I knew Gaiman talked about it a lot, so I was like. And Why it, should I, that be hard to find? Well, yeah, especially because Diana Wynne Jones is such a well-known author. Yeah, it it is surprising to me, but well, maybe this this very meeting will create a resurgence of demand, and the booksellers will take note, and there will be a new fresh printing with a new forward by Neil Gaiman, and a new and a day new will dawn. <laughs> And which, of course, will be mentioned in the forward because Gaiman will thank the ladies of the Blades and Bodice Rivers Book Club for drawing much needed attention to this beloved Diana Wynne Jones classic. And he'll say, I've gone back and read the books and so far my favorite was Morning Glory Milking Farm. I'll, if Gaiman knows who I am, I'll take it. <laughs> okay, well, well anyway. it's one of the things in this book is like a machine playing out every possible scenario. I think this is a possible scenario. I'm not saying it's the most likely one, but it's one. It happen. It is it's one. Possible. I use my robot powers. <laughs> <laughs> well, shall we go around and say what we thought? Okay. Do I go first since I'm clockwise? You want? Oh, did you yeah. start, Leanna? Did you tell us what you thought? Since you're the host. Oh yeah, you should go first. Do I have to? Yes. You don't. I guess not. But <laughs> it's, it's, well, it's not a permanent answer. I mean, I quite liked it. Um, I didn't give it five stars, but I did really enjoy it. It was like a three point something rounded off to a four, like nearly a four, basically a four, low four. Yeah. Four minus. Four <laughs> minus. Yeah. Um, I, for enjoyment, I would give it three, but for like the nostalgia factor and just like reading her writing again I would give it four so I landed at a three and a half I also just think it was very inventive yeah um but I think the plot kind of got away from her a little bit we'll talk about it um but I wonder if I would like it more on a reread now that I kind of I did see some reviews on Goodreads when I went to market as read from someone from people saying oh I just finished my reread of this and knowing this time everything you know it was so fun reading yeah. it so I, I sh I'm sure it would be at least a different experience reading it the yeah second time. yeah so I'll say three and a half, I guess, kind of in your neighborhood, Lana. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. I had mixed feelings on it. I ended up giving it a three. Um, there were things that I really liked about it and thought were really inventive, but also there were large chunks of it where I was very bored. So it was a mix. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh-oh. Ready? Um, no. <laughs> Okay, so I have a complicated relationship with this book because um, 
it just was not the book for me. And I don't necessarily think it's the book's fault, but like this book made me hate reading. I was just like, do I like reading? Do I like books? Like I would look at the book and know I had to read more and be like, well, I could start my taxes early. Like that's how much I didn't want to read it. And a lot of it was just because there wasn't any type of aids in reading it because like it's very painful for me to sit down and read a physical book. Like it sucks for my ADHD. I I get distracted and then I have to go reread what I just read because I was thinking about something else and it was just <laughs> so um I gave it a one just off my vibes with it. But I'm sure it's not the book's fault. It's a me as a reader fault, but it made me hate reading. <laughs> so oh, I'll I say that. So I described it issue. Like I think that's a great uh, yeah why you need different formats for different okay people to even this have is to how, like it. This is how I described it. This is kind of like Winnie the Pooh, The Wizard of Oz, and Hitchhiker's Guide made a mutant baby who was somehow also Merlin. Yeah. Tell me I'm wrong. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, 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 not, and the thing is, is like, that's not necessarily bad. It's not bad either, but but it's just like, you got the 100 acre woods that's all wackadoo. (laughs) And then, like, Dorothy coming in with her Tin Man. And then, like, they're also Merlin, and somehow in the future and the past and the present at the same time, it hurt my mind. So um, I didn't like it, but I think it's it's a subjective reasoning, not an objective reasoning. If that helps, if there is a, such a thing as objectivity <laughs> in <Yeah>. reviewing, <laughs> I mean, I think objectively that was your experience of it. So. And and to how hours to shorts point now you get to be Leanna. I know I'm the Leanna this time. <laughs> um, you I knew like, medicine and it is bitter, Leanna. <laughs> I had um I had I knew I had decided to like dress as the doctor for this live before I read the book. Um, and I found reading it that like it's a lot of things and there's a lot of things you could compare it to, but no one thing that it would be a read alike for because it's insane. Um, Mm -hmm. But I think the thing it most reminded me of is Doctor Who is like the chaos of watching Doctor Who is because there's so many different types of things in Doctor Who. There's time travel and robots and aliens and and there's politics and there's Sherwood Forest and there's like King Arthur and Shakespeare. And like, that's what it's like watching Doctor Who. (laughs) I think that might be why I never got into watching. (laughs) Well, here's the thing. I love Doctor Who and I totally see that. And parts of the book did have that like chaos that's like charming, charming chaos where you're having a good time. You're going on the adventure with the doctor. I feel supported in this. And then sometimes it was just like, what the hell am I reading? Who is this well, for? I so I think it lost that. At well, I think times. with Doctor Who, because you have the doctor and his <laughs> companion as your like rock. And then no matter the chaos like circling around them, they, you know them, you know the doctor and you know mm-hmm. the companion. And no matter where they are, they are them. Well, mm-hmm. I think some episodes they are not them, but like you know, it's like that's that's your like thing to carry you through. And this book doesn't have that. There's no like thing for you to latch on to because nothing is necessarily what it seems, and the thing that you think you're following isn't actually the thing you're following. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's more like if like role playing Doctor Who, because like Doctor the Doctor doesn't have anything to hang on to when he's the Doctor. Like you, the audience, is hanging on to the Doctor. But if you just had the experience of like all the wild time travel shenanigans that they get up to being in his place, like that's what it would feel like. Well, and isn't it interesting that this was market? Like, can you imagine being 11 and reading this? No. Like, as an adult, I was like really struggling at times to understand. There are also kind of like adult things in it, not a lot. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I was was not reading like a four. Like, it started off reading very middle grade. And then I was like, whoa, this is like very adult, but also young. It's it's weird age wise. Who would you, who do you give this? I think it more so keeps company with like Hitchhiker's Guide or Good Omens or these other kind of like chaotic, speculative. Yes, it did remind me, especially kind of at the beginning, it reminded me a lot of Good Omens which I just read because of Liana and then it also at times reminded me of the unlikely escape of Uriah Heep because it has all of these references and like if you don't know the references especially if you're an 11 year old child like I could see that not being as fun you're (laughs) saying I trained you up for this yeah well it did (laughs) like it it definitely this month of reading has had a lot of similarities driven by Liana's choices you know what's Um, funny is I am not really a fan of any of those things (laughs) Like, I don't like yeah. that kind of chaos in my sci-fi very much. Like, I, I've read them, and they're, I, I see why people like them, but I don't enjoy You don't them. like Good Omens? Did I know that? 
<laughs> it was fine. You were not pleased that I told you that. I probably deleted that. Didn't need to retain that. Sponged it from her memory. It was like, fine. The Good that. Omens is probably the best of that bunch, but like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, I didn't really like. I don't like, like it I, either. It's it's, it, it's, it's pretentiously much. clever. <laughs> However, I did like the very beginning of the book because it was just like the middle management yeah. going, ah, shit, I have to go fix yeah. someone's problem. I love that. And I wanted yeah. him to be the protagonist because he was just going to be so grumpy. And he was reminding me of like the good omens type of thing. Like, and I was in awesome. for it. And then yeah. it switched. And I was like, why are we following this fucking kid? This girl also who has no personality. Me, it also reminded <laughs> me of like Terry Pratchett for that reason, because of like the Assassin's Guild and the bureaucracy of like how they're talking about like speculative things, but in a really kind of like doing the business of the day rah, right. rah, rah, kind of or way. Like, like Loki. Yeah. The, the Loki TV show. Loki, yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. Or Umbrella, but it's uh, Umbrella Academy also. It reminded me a lot of Umbrella Academy. So it reminds us of lots of things. I don't Anything know if it's necessarily get out of them well. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I gave it three stars because there were parts of it that I really liked. And I think parts of it are really clever. And But then it was so repetitive in the middle. And I feel like it really... I think that's fair. Which, like, is also... I mean, I'm not, I don't disagree. But it's also kind of, like, by design that it's repetitive in the middle because of, like, what's supposedly going yeah. on. But it's not a pleasant reading experience. It's not. <laughs> It's not it. I wanted to do my taxes instead of read this. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, the word for this book I feel like is chaotic. It's just there's so much going on. But yeah. I love her writing so much. Like it was, it really took me back to being a teen and reading her for the first. Like See, it felt I've never read her for me. I think because I had read her as a teen, so for me it felt like oh. I know this writing, like this feels so nice. Now I want to go reread Howl's Moving Castle. <laughs> I feel like that makes sense because I've never read from her before. This was my first time reading her writing. Oh, whoa, really? Bethany, you and me here. We're like in the same same boat. <laughs> Man, this is not what I would have given you to try her for the first time. Please yeah. go, please go read Howl's Moving Castle. It is it is first That's of all probably romantic available too. in a variety of <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. It's funny, though, as I think that, like, while the majority are poo-pooing it, we're not disagreeing on the things that we comp it to, and all the things we're comping it to are extremely popular things. So I yeah. feel like we're weirdly hyping this book, because we're like, it was so mid, I hated it, I didn't enjoy reading it. It's like Umbrella Academy, Good Omens, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, like, Good Doctor Who. It's like all these things that people love. <laughs> well, I would recommend people try it, because I don't know that I've read something quite like it. It feels like no. a very distinctive book, so yes. I think it's worth, like seeing if you vibe with it because it's pretty unique yeah. yeah and there's so many threads she pulls together at the end that i was like whoa yeah. <laughs> which i think honestly like the end like the way it came together at the end bumped it up to me for me to a three because otherwise this would have been more like a two probably um but i mean yeah it's impressive the way she kind of like crafted it and i could see how it'd be cool to reread but if mm -hmm. you wanted to because like knowing what's going on you know there were times that also kind of reminded me of Simon Pegg movies, like the Hot Fuzz and like those kinds of movies. Oh. It's very British humor true. in general in this book, I feel like. Yeah, it yeah. gave me Terry Pratchett vibes. And here's the thing. I want to like Terry Pratchett, but I do not like Terry Pratchett. I'm sorry. I've tried. I've tried. I gave it yeah. a good a good college try here. But it's just like the pretentious cleverness of his writing. Maybe he's not trying to be pretentious, but it comes across that way. Like, oh, like how clever I am. Ooh. And I'm like, fuck you. It's a I book just, about time travel. <laughs> I find that tone to be pretty delightful. So <laughs> I think I, it just works for me. I really like um, Johannes Cabal, the detective, has that kind of tone. I discovered yeah. when I was talking to Leanna about Good Omens, like, oh, I think Terry Pratchett is the like, one of the popularizers of this thing that I love but didn't know came from him so like that is a tone that I really like but it is distinctive so it's like yeah it is strong flavor you're See, which like, you might not like. like I've read a couple books from Terry Pratchett and I liked them but I feel like I can only like him in small doses if that makes sense like yeah. I like I like it but then I don't want to read any more of his books for a while 
maybe you would like a short story collection or something. I or, would love uh, a short story collection. Yeah. <laughs> like, I really, really enjoyed Pratchett's humor. I just tend to find that, like, kind of, like, I didn't feel that way about this book as much, but kind of what we were saying about this book, that there's, like, nothing to latch on to. I feel like with Pratchett's books, like, I'm, like, every single joke is a hit. Every single, every single joke slaps. But also, I'm, like, that's all this is. And I don't, like, I need a novel to, like, grip me in a way that I'm invested in and also laughing. So then that's why, like, Good Omens is, like, perfect for me. Because I'm, like, I get all of the, like, amazing witticisms of Terry Pratchett. But we have Gaiman in there <laughs> to, like, give us a story it's that I feel compelled there. by. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Well, we read it. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't know. I don't have a lot to say because, like, I still don't understand things, and I wanted to. Oh, I don't either. Okay, so it's not just me. I'm like, I'm not a hundred percent sure no, I know but, what happened in this. Like, no, that's I, part I, why I, I, I need to reread it. I think I understand it. I'm pretty sure. And again, like, I think that's what bumped my rating was because I do get what she was doing with it, and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. I mean, that's pretty. It's a lot but it's smart well, i felt like i had a lot more fun also like in the latter third half um yes where i started to realize that the things that i thought were the case were probably not the case and so then but you had enough pieces already to start to guess to start to be like that that's that that that's that but that's that and then like having some of that like confirmed as you go and some of it not be confirmed but when you started just like see the shape that things were taking and the way things were becoming subverted you could be like I, well, if this is not this, then I bet this other thing is also not this. Like, yeah. And then they I all knew. became King Arthur's court. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Wait, yeah. what? What's well, happening? Like, I, I think I get the general like outline of what happened, but that's why I'm saying I would like to reread it because I think that would help me be like, okay, like I understand the specifics of what happened a little bit better. I'm like, this feels, I don't know, even just like all of the different names at times being used on the same page for the same person like i had to really focus to try to make sure i was like tracking Ooh, did you guys yeah, have that's um, complicated did and also have, like the I girl was, child, I did not the king like that the girl was actually the other person i was like wait what <laughs> and then i mean once so, they yeah. Really oh yeah i didn't see that so. coming at yeah. all which i thought yeah. was a fun that was a fun like oh whoa okay well, and then it, makes it, like less, it, it also <laughs> makes it less weird that she's like into this older dude when she's not 12, you know? Yeah. But also, did you guys have an author children's, children's book? Like, it's weird for a children. Like, I really dislike it as a children's book. I don't think it's yeah. a children's book. I didn't yeah. think it was a children's book. Well, and maybe it was, maybe it wasn't marketed that way at the time. But no, because it said um, it was originally published by children somebody children's publishers yes it was a children's, children's I, book like, i don't like no, it i don't like it as a children's book i no. feel like if it's like this is for odd children like he's a strange child okay. like who would have this book and like enjoy a, it i'd be like book? i don't Maybe like, teenagers. Maybe I'm cool like this is for teens. But like, <laughs> when I was reading Diana Wynne Jones, I was in like middle school, and I just don't know that this is for middle schoolers. Not even in the content, but just like this, I don't think you would like it if you were a middle schooler, or you would yeah, be a an weird odd child middle, middle schooler. Yeah, <laughs> it was probably yes. that that was her publisher. So whatever right. she wrote, they published. True. Mm -hmm. um, did you guys and have an author's note at the end? Then. Oh no! Um, I don't. No. I don't. Think I did not. I did not have an author's note. No. Yeah. It's, I just have the blank author's page. note. Um, <laughs> is just an. It's more of like, it's not really what I think of as an author's note. I guess it is. Like I was expecting, you know, I guess like acknowledgments and things like that. But it's more just like an explanation of, in addition to the way that like the book tells you like oh this is this arthurian thing oh this is this like name connection there's some things that you might have still been like huh so then the <laughs> author's note is like furthering that so this will if anyone which i'm guessing is majority in chat have not read this book you'll only be even more confused after i read this author's note to you and it will only slightly illuminate things for the people that have read it so, <laughs> here's the author's note Everyone knows who King Arthur was and that Merlin was the magician who disguised Arthur's father as the Duke of Tintagel and sneaked him into Arthur's mother, the Duchess of Tintagel. I no did one... not 
no, I no. pause. No, I have to dispute. <laughs> Everyone. Okay, does but not in know fairness that. to her, she didn't make that up. That's like a thing from the right. Arthur legend. Yeah. No, but it's I'm little, just saying it's a little rapey in the start. It's a little rapey in the start. It's not everyone knows it though. That's what I'm disputing. Yeah. <laughs> like, did I, I guess she should have said. Well, maybe everybody perhaps, British knows it, or perhaps maybe. she should have said it is known that. <laughs> yeah, maybe it is known. I, I mean, I knew. I do. I know Merlin. Yes. Do I know Arthur? Yes. We haven't I gotten to the confusing bits. No. Okay. <laughs> That okay. wasn't the confusing Sorry. bit. I didn't mean no. to stop you prematurely. <laughs> no one uh, says who the Duchess's father was, but she plainly carried remarkable genes. All Arthur's half-sisters were powerful witches. These ladies and Arthur were, of course, part of Martellian's second breeding program, for which he took the guise of Merlin. And this may still be going on today, for Arthur, in fact, had several sons who do not figure in the best-known stories about him. Martellian's first breeding program was earlier when he was roaming Northern Europe and calling himself Wolf. In this disguise, he was later confused with the god Wotan. As Wolf, he bred a whole race of heroes, the most famous of whom nowadays is Siegfried. But this was not always so. The Anglo-Saxon poem Beowulf makes it plain that in earlier days, the best of Wolf's descendants was a young man called Fitella. Fitella was better at killing dragons than any man alive, but he disappeared from song and story before Siegfried became famous. Fatella, of course, vanished when Rainer won, caught him, and put him in the stace tomb. So I hope that clears of that course. up. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Obviously, that's what happened. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> okay. That was, okay lot, so. that was a lot to All questions have been answered. <laughs> You're welcome. Because we have, because we have, like, <laughs> Arthur and Merlin but apparently she's saying that like, oh, but also this was a breeding program related to Beowulf. Well, we know the breeding program from the book, but like when at right, the yeah. end, not all the names that we learned at the end were seemed Arthurian. Like, and yeah. then she's like, oh, but the names, they have meanings from other myth that might be tied to Arthur. Here you go. Yeah. yeah. Like when I mean, at the end it was wolf, you're like, wolf who? Why is there a wolf right, here? Yeah, I don't remember that from Arthur. You're like, this wolf. <laughs> Okay. I mean, I think we can circle back to the, like, is this for children? Like, anything that's based on a breeding program, I'm going to go ahead and say no. <laughs> yeah. Not for kids. Would, would agree. Uh, it's like, I feel like wow. this is an example of, like, girl, maybe maybe pay her back <laughs> like you know well, yeah, like, it was maybe also like, simplify. Even, like weird weird stuff because i was reading this thinking oh this sound this is like middle grade and then it was like something something oh do you want to see some dancing girls and I'm like what the hell <laughs> well like middle schoolers would want to see some boobs okay yeah. like i get it like well, they would want to see they're just boobs. girls that dance right exactly. you know, that they were, you know you like know. uh eight lords of leaping maybe yeah, it's like exactly that. It's yeah exactly <laughs> Uh, side note, I just found out, and I maybe everyone knows that, maybe it is known, and I just was not one of the it ones who known. knew. Um, did known. you know that every single one of those things is a reference to a bird in that song? In, um, bird. <laughs> in the, are you in talking the, about uh, the twelve days of Yeah, they're all birds. I did not know this. Neither I, I assume that you finally got a break wait, with like okay, the five gold rings. <laughs> like that's exciting. All the maids of milk and all that. Those are birds. Those are all different bird references. What birds milk things? I don't know, but I saw a TikTok about it and I was like, so you're telling me this guy he got her all birds. is getting her 12 <laughs> days worth of birds. The birds. Maybe she's a big bird fan. May uh, Maybe. Maybe. She's but a after a while, that's too many birds. Even if she's... I really like birds, and I'm like, you've got me so many birds. I mean, like, especially because you're getting enough with more the birds. birds every day. It'd be one thing if you just got a different bird every day, but just the sheer volume of birds we're talking about is pretty overwhelming. It is and just one lone partridge. That poor partridge has got no partridge friends. <laughs> I, I feel like there's sinister things going it, on but... in this song now that yeah. you can't have that many birds. Yeah. Anyway, it is known, but not to Who's me. So maybe, I mean, maybe 12 Days of Christmas is like the original love bombing of a bird birder. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bird bombing. <laughs> oh. As to the audience of Hexwood, it does say in, uh, on Wikipedia that it was a novel for young adults. And I don't think young adult existed as like a category. It so, I like, think that's no. part of the confusion because I re <clears throat> back in my day, um, we didn't have YA as strong yeah. of a category as it exists now. There was really like, there was the children section and there would be like a section that was kind of aimed at teens mm -hmm. amidst that, but it wasn't marketed in the but same way. So it way. makes sense that her yeah. publisher, which is like, calls itself a children's publisher, would, also include, would publish right, something YA. that's anything yeah. below 18. Yeah, right. that, that's yeah. right. 
But yeah, I mean, I guess somebody in their teens could like this, but it still does feel more. It used um, to be built different. It, Those British children going like to public school, yeah. they all yeah. know Beowulf and they all know Arthur and they all know Terry well, Pratchett. Were, sure, Terry I do Pratchett. feel like a lot of before the rise of YA, there was a lot of people reading like Stephen King in their teen years. Like so, Neil Gaiman. Yeah. It's true. So um, yeah. maybe or maybe we were days. made of. I mean, so. yeah. yeah, we're we were made of sterner stuff back then. Yeah, I was reading YA. Chuck Palahniuk. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. like Fight Club and stuff. Like I was, I read all of. All of his books in high school. Yeah, was a strange I was reading, child. I, well. I was reading like Jane Austen and yeah, I was reading classics Broken. and mysteries. Basically, yeah, so, I mean, if we're expecting high schoolers to read Macbeth, yeah, I think they, can... they can read Hexwood. Oh yeah, for sure. I just mean more from like, is this a fun book for a high schooler? Right. Is I think a, a weird, a, a weird high schooler. <laughs> well, that yes. no, but Macbeth is like you have to read it in school. Yeah, this like... is supposed to be for like fun times. I, yeah, I mean, I mean as, I, I'm at a full adult and I still didn't get it. <laughs> so I'm like, me in high school, I'm like, I don't know. I was just trying to get weed in high school. I couldn't have handled this. Like, <laughs> like my high school experience. This would be a really interesting book to read, High. <laughs> I do think Hex would assume I tried. That... It didn't help. I'm sorry. <laughs> I also tried to get High and do this. I'm like, maybe that'll make me want to read this. Yeah, and the scientific it, it experiment was conducted. Yeah. <laughs> I do think Hex would assume. Help. I think it assumes a very British audience. Like, yeah, I think yeah, yeah, you that's went to public school in Britain when this was written. You probably got all the references. <laughs> right. yeah. um, but I'm actually, I'm glad you picked it because I, th I think it was interesting. Like, it's yeah. pretty distinct from anything I've read. Um, but I don't know that it's one everybody will love, as we've demonstrated. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's apparently out of print, so... <laughs> Yeah. Which doesn't yeah. necessarily always mean that people will dislike it, but. But it, it's not, it hasn't endured the way some of her other better known ones. Yeah. If Miyazaki yeah. made a movie of this, then everyone would love it. That would that well, it probably would have made more sense because it would have been illustrated and I would have been able to also, visualize things. If you think about how true. strange movies like Spirited Away are, if you read a book that was Spirited Away, it would be more confusing than Hacks I think this would actually make a great graphic novel. Because you could do a lot to play oh, with, like yeah. the visuals of like people. I wish it had visuals. Agree, actually, yeah. it would. This yeah. would be a cool graphic novel. I think that's true. I probably would have liked it better. In, and in a graphic novel, you can condense the boring parts and yeah. show. Whereas yeah. the Miyazaki yeah. movie, I also genuinely think that would make a good Miyazaki film. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I love Howl. Howl's Moving Castle. I've I've never read the book, but I love the Miyazaki film. The book. I actually don't so like it very much. <laughs> Sorry. You don't. You don't I like, like the movie. Much? I've seen the movie. I liked it. But... I don't like the book or the movie very much. I don't hate them, no. but I think it was too hyped for me. Like everyone, it's a little about romantic too, castle. so it might not be your vibe. It is. That was like one of my first like romantic things that I really loved and like had like com complicated feelings about. Of like, but he's old, but no, and <laughs> you know, I guess it is what married. it is. I don't know. <laughs> like I don't know the bacon and eggs they cook in that movie. I've never seen food more delicious. Like. <laughs> Like, I don't know how they do food in that film, but it looks delish. I felt that way more about the food in Ponyo. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of food in Ponyo. Hold on, sorry. Things are going on in my house. I'll be right back. Time machine has been activated. <laughs> yeah. She's been summoned to her time. I've never, I don't even know what Ponyo is. It's a Miyazaki movie. Oh. I feel like I'm very behind on all things Miyazaki. I've seen a few of his movies, but I know there's a lot I haven't seen. I like the ones I've seen, but... I like the art that I see from it. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of times when people have a cool tattoo, when I look at the captions, it's like, oh, that's from Miyazaki. Okay. There's a lot of imagery in Howl's Moving Castle, the film, that I like, but, like, when I actually watched the movie, and when I actually read the book, I would just, it in no way lived up to any, like, fraction of my expectations. Yeah, I wonder if maybe part of it is because it was, like, a teen, like, a formative reading experience for me of loving both or fantasy and romance. Because, <laughs> like, Hexwood had no yeah. hype. I had no yeah, nothing except that it was dedicated to gaming. So. I just, like, picked it up in a bookstore because it had a cool cover and it was in the teen section. Like, yeah. I didn't have any recommendation. I feel like it. sometimes, too, that can change your experience with something when, like, you don't go in knowing an expectation. Anything. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Okay. I just realized what I look like. Because someone knocked on the door. Greg's not here, so I went and looked. And it was the mailman. 
and he dropped something off and I went to grab it. <laughs> and then I looked at the package and it was the wrong address. It's my neighbor. So I, I literally chased after the mailman and gave him this package that is for the neighbor. And I went back in and I forgot I looked like this. <laughs> He he was helped by a very friendly fa robot of the opera. Uh, I forgot I was wearing this. I'm like, it's for my neighbor. And he's like, okay. Oh my god. Oh god. Like you're wearing your COVID mask in the wrong area. <laughs> <laughs> Just I chased a stranger down. Like uh, that's a, anyway, it's a great so mask. Danger, Will Robinson. Yeah. Danger. <laughs> I just realized that's what happened, and he's like, going, "Mailman, you're the first rainer. Come here, <laughs> like, like, girl. It's it's not even noon yet. <laughs> it's too early in the day for this. Anyway, so that's pretty amazing. That, then again, you that's live in how LA, my life so is. He, you know, I was gonna he's say probably, he's probably seen weirder things. Yeah, in LA. he's probably yeah. he might have, but he like, thinks still, you're like prepping like... for an audition or something. <laughs> Wonder what the I'm trying to like get into character. Mind you, I'm wearing sweatpants and UGG boots. Like I'm like I'm just a creature now. I'm like, what? Who? What are all these decisions you've made? <laughs> In very distinctive fashion sensibility. <laughs> He should have told him like what uh, Wesley says in Princess Bride when there's like, why are you wearing a mask? Are you hiding like a burn or something? Are you hiding a scar? And he's like, oh, I just think that masks are terribly comfortable. I think everyone's going to wear them in the future. <laughs> It is, it's definitely a vibe. Sweatpants and mask, you know, that's the new yeah. comfort. You know. Yeah. I love Wesley and Princess Bride. Do you love Wes not cool. Wesley not love Wesley outside of Princess Bride? Well, he doesn't <laughs> exist outside of Princess the way Bride. You that's the vibe though. Instead of I love Wesley, you're like, I love him in Princess Bride. Like to be clear. Oh, Wesley place. from Princess Bride. Maybe I misspoke, but yeah, no. He's just a cool character. I wanted to be the Dread Pirate Roberts for so many Halloweens and it never happened. I'm sad about it. Well, you know, there's many Halloweens in your future. We can make there that are. Really true. I yeah. Are we reading anything piratey this year? <laughs> well, know. that actually segues possibly to mine. My because I, I think I'm gonna ch ch swap what I picked. No, you're not. So, I don't remember but, what you picked if it helps. Oh, good. <laughs> so okay. it'll be so this is what I've just picked all along. But Amanda, <laughs> do you want to say because mine's not till July? So oh, are we saying what we're doing next? It could be a segue. It's a up to you guys if, if we're ready to do that <laughs> usually we do it at the end i don't know if we have anything more oh, to say okay. about the book or just life yeah well um, everyone hated hexwood except for those who didn't and <laughs> that's all there's to say <laughs> well isn't it's that just... true for any book <laughs> everyone yeah. hated it except for those who didn't <laughs> just because it's always true doesn't mean it's not worth saying okay yeah <laughs> fair enough that's very that's a very doctorish <laughs> word yeah. Yeah. to say <laughs> But um, no, I, I I tried with it. It's just I'm not the target audience for this. I'm not the the right. So who, for this but who story. is the target audience? For this? Fuck if oh, I know. But weird, like for me, a I'm weird just. Teen, I think. Well, the way that it was dedicated to the way it was dedicated to Neil child. Gaiman. That like Neil yeah. Gaiman is not only the inspiration; he is the target audience. It's only for. <laughs> Neil Gaiman. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Mystery solved. This was written for Neil Gaiman, and it's just an accident that any of us are reading it. So, like, I guess yeah. since I wrote it, other people can read it too. But guys, this is just for Gaiman. Yeah. This is. Just I mean, I I feel like people who like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and Arthurian Legends Which I do. should read this. So, Leanna and Good Omens and Doctor Who love Arthurian and Umbrella Academy. <laughs> yeah, I mean that too. But like, but you know, like I feel like. If those are things that you get excited about, this is also this you know. is nothing at all like it. So I do not want to pitch it as a read alike. I repeat, this is not a read alike. But in the same way that when I talk about By Force Alone by Lavi Tadar, I'm like, this is a super weird book. It's chaotic as hell, and you really have to know Arthur. And in the sequel, you really have to know Robin Hood and Ivanhoe, which I love Ivanhoe, but no one else in the world has read Ivanhoe. So I'm like. <laughs> Like, if you specifically know these things because he will not explain them to you and you enjoy chaos and speculative weird shit, then, like, these I enjoy these books, but you have to like those things specifically. Yeah. Don't be like, ooh, Arthur, yeah. ooh, Robin Hood, I'll read the don't, don't. It's a don't niche do it. audience. Yeah. I think, but, like, with this, like, if you yeah. like weird chaotic stuff and you also know Arthur and you like British humor yeah. and all these things, like, you take all and, like boxes. And, like, weird, complicated sci-fi stuff. Up. Yeah, you also, in addition to being somebody who likes Arthurian legend, you also have to like weird sci fi stuff. Yeah. Which is true of My Force Alone as well. There you go. <laughs> hey, I, I just wish there was more like a niche for Leah. 
I wanted more office comedy in this. Like I want it. Cause he like the guy, he turned on like the robot too, yeah. to like figure out what would happen if like all like Socrates and like all these people played soccer. Like that what would happen? Thing. Yeah. And I was like, that is hilarious. And I was like, I wish this was more of like a workplace comedy where everyone's just like, yeah. gotta fix someone else's problem. I think it would have been really funny. I don't think that's what Diana Wynn Jones obviously wanted to do because she didn't. No. But like if the book was that, I think I could have read it all and had a good time. Cause it was like this fun sarcasm that I feel like a lot of people could relate to. But then again, if it's for children, they don't know what jobs are yet. So they wouldn't get it. So yeah. maybe it's just me. Well, I definitely like, you know, I mean some of the parts that were so entertaining were things like, you know, going to get the earth wardrobe when they don't know earth fashions and like I don't know, mm -hmm. like that that stuff was entertaining and yeah. Yeah. And Marty and trying his best and still looks like he's like playing Robin Hood. <laughs> he's walking around the streets in a cape. <laughs> uh, <laughs> She's like yeah. Yeah, like, Girl, you're at the grocery store. What are you doing? I my tip, my real takeaway is that I would love to see this adapted to a graphic novel. I think yeah. that that'd be rad as hell. I think that a lot of yeah, I think a lot of the like pacing issues could be fixed that way, and you would get yeah like the the flashy fun parts. I think I also like weirdness better in graphic novels, like than I do in novels, like weird stuff. It, when it's got like for I don't know why that is but for whatever reason like I can do weird sci-fi shit in graphic novels in a way that I don't enjoy in books yeah so Oleana you're muted sorry after Gaiman learned that Hexwood was dedicated to him he wrote a poem about Hexwood oh are you gonna do a reading for us <laughs> if, if you wish to hear I would love it Please. so this Please. is on his blog because someone asked him if he knew that Hexwood was dedicated to him which like of course he knows that. <laughs> like, why would he yeah. not know that? But anyway, it says, ha, indeed, Hexwood is a book by Diana Wynne Jones, and you can find out more at her website. Or just read her books. One of, one of the privileges of having kids is that you get to read out loud to them, and ha reading Diana out loud is a delight. Her books unpack very tightly with scarcely a word wasted in a hundred thousand, and reading them silently, it's easy to miss stuff without knowing it. Anyway, yes, I did know she dedicated Hexwood to me. I wrote some doggerel poetry about it back when the book came out and she sent me a copy hang on i bet i can find it on the hard disk here we go <clears throat> there's the kitten curled up in kilkenny was given a perfect pot of cream and a princess asleep in a thorn wrapped castle who's dreaming a perfect dream there's a dog in alaska who danced with delight on a pile of mastodon bones and i've got a copy of hexwood dedicated to me by diana win jones <laughs> <laughs> There's an actress who clutches her Oscar and sobs with proper impromptu joy. There's a Machiavellian villain who's hit on a wonderfully evil ploy. There's wizards in crystal castles and kings on their golden thrones. But I've got a copy of Hexwood dedicated to me by Diana Wynne Jones. There's a fisherman out on the sea today who just caught the perfect fish. There's a child in Lutton who opened a genieful bottle and got a wish. There are people who live in glass houses, have managed to outlaw stones, but I've got a copy of Hexwood dedicated to me by Diana Wynne Jones. <laughs> that that was very song. charming. <laughs> there he goes. He didn't say he liked it. <laughs> He's no. just saying he has it. <laughs> this is this yeah. is a thing that I have. <laughs> I'm in physical possession of this book. I, I have physical possession of this. Yeah. Yeah. But he I seems delighted by like having poem. it. So yes. he does. It was it inspired him to write a poem. I mean, it would yeah. be a little bit. I mean, for him, I think having Diana Wynne Jones dedicate a book to him would be a little bit like Neil Gaiman dedicating a book to me, and me being like, ah! yeah. <laughs> I will Guess never shut I up have. about this. Guess what I have? Yeah. Dedicated to me. And then you'd be like, I'm never reading the book in case I hate in case it. Case I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be quite awkward if someone dedicated a book to you that you, <laughs> you right. deeply did not enjoy. Yeah. It's like I'm loving the, the gesture. Ender right there. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. maybe it's just shade. It's just like this is dedicated to you. To you. <laughs> You're gonna hate this. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It could go so to nobody directions. write any monster smut and dedicate it to me, please. <laughs> someone Well, that seems like a challenge, Leanna. <laughs> Somewhere Regine Abel <laughs> shan't be writing poetry in honor of the book if that's what you're hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. So, yeah, so yeah. 2024 yeah. word. 2024. 2024. 
Yes. We're working it out. At the very least, I feel that this fit the prompt. Oh, yeah. Certainly. Yeah. It dealt with time and space and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think it works. Kind yeah. of and a fantasy. It's ish. kind of a very loose theme. Like, it can yeah. be interpreted yeah. lots of ways. So Part, part of the brilliance. Yeah. Courtesy of Amanda. You're Speaking of, Amanda, have you chosen our April I book? have. I have chosen it. Um, so for April, I have picked... Calamity by Constance Fay. I um, it's romance. It's in space. There's robots on the cover. Twenty forward. So I think it's going to be fun. It's like um, you know, it's kind of space pirates. Oh, maybe the dry pirate rabbit will work if it was an alien. So. I think you just color your face green and then dress as the pirate dread pirate robbers. Well, technically, I think they're in space suits. They're not robots. Now that I'm looking at it better. But yeah, so they're in space. We could do an astronaut theme. We could do an alien space. theme. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I had that marked already. Let me double check. Because I think that's what you said you were thinking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember thinking this sounded good. So I'm excited yeah. for this. Thing. Easily accessible. There is an audio component. <laughs> so oh. for anyone who needs it. Not out of oh. print. Not and- out of print. It does have a tagline that I think appeals to two people on this podcast very specifically. I'm One, it says me. Winter's Orbit meets Alona Andrews mm-hmm. in this sexy enemies to lovers room. I will say I had this one for review, so I have read it. Oh, okay. But it'll be interesting. Okay. Did you hate it? Did you hate it? How can I hate it? Okay. okay. Well, but, well that's but, good. That was a good conversation. I, think, I mean, that way said, I think I went in with the wrong expectation. You expected to like it, and that was the problem. Well, no, I think I think the cover, <laughs> the the vibe from the cover and the marketing, I was expecting something that took itself a little more seriously, and it really doesn't. Like it's oh, very. That sounds oh, great. no, I'm expecting like goofy space pirates. So maybe yeah. I'm going to go in with the right attitude. Okay. Go. Yeah, so my prediction that is that me and Amanda crazy. love this one, and Bethany and Leanna hate it. That's that's gonna it's be. Very you know what? I think that's just how it is. We, like we should just pick things. We're always split. Yeah. Uh, hearing, I, I mean, I will probably reread it or at least do like a skim reread. But hearing it, that it's like more goofy, like I wish the cover was more fun. That's a quite. Yeah, the cover doesn't really give the vibe of the book. Is well, it is cartoon, right? No, no. But like, well, it's very, I like, think it's just more like graphic. Like, like that looks um, like it would keep company yeah. with Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Yeah, like it's very camp. This Actually, is more. This is more like thing. it. It needs like you know like a space alien indie romance cover. It's like a oh so like, like man, a really you're campy. Ice it's planet. very campy and like I don't know. I can't wait for this Amanda. Yeah, and that makes it sound more fun for me. Good. Yeah. I'm very excited about <laughs> so. You know, I think like we all used to p- try to pick books that we thought other people would like, and then they never worked anyway. So now we're just picking things we want to read. Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, if you like it, you like it. Yes. Okay. So the th- <laughs> so the theme is astronauts. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I haven't read it yet. Space? I'm gonna leave it a little open. I think they're okay. like space pirates and stuff. You could definitely but, like, do space pirates. Okay. Yeah. So well, you, you whatever you want to do, you could do a nautical theme for the one I would like to pick, and you guys can tell me if you if you're not okay with this. But the la oh, let me double check what it's called. It's the new Stuart Turton that's coming out the spring. Wait, before you say anything else, I just have to tell you that I know that you're dressed as Indiana Jones, but to me you are Tom Bombadil. But anyway, carry on. I've never <laughs> been more insulted in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> um, how dare you? <laughs> Okay, it's called The Last Something. Hold The hold. Last Murder at the End of the World? Yes. I just I just go- Google Stuart Turton and that popped up. Yes. <laughs> and it comes out in May. Yes, it comes out in May. And um let me I'll read you the pitch because I think it fits our theme. Uh but like the murdery version. Um <laughs> Let's see here. Outside the uh, solve the murder that's left that blah, 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 blah. solve the murder to save what's left of the world. Outside the island, there is nothing. The world was destroyed by a fog that swept the planet, killing anyone it touched. On the island, it is idyllic. 120 villagers li- and three scientists living in peaceful harmony. The villagers are content to fish, farm, and feast, to obey their nightly curfew, and to do what they're told by the scientists. Until, to the horror of the islanders, one of the beloved scientists is found brutally stabbed to death. And then they learn that the murder has triggered a lowering of the security system around the island, the only thing that was keeping the fog at bay. 
So I have 107 hours to try to figure out who done it and how to reverse that. Is this his this is his third book, right? <clears throat> yes. Yeah. I feel like this is like the village where like the fog will clear and they'll be like, oh, there's just like people over there. We're on Catalina. That's We're on Catalina I'm, the whole time. That's what I'm guessing. <laughs> that's that's the twist that's kind of obvious from the description, but, but I maybe, don't know. Maybe they'll see I haven't I purposely didn't request it like going in fresh but i don't know if you guys were okay with re reading a newer release i thought that yeah. fit yeah. the theme pretty well have you it, guys read yeah. his other two books yes mm -hmm. I, have. I have i've read well. not read anything by Stuart Turner. did you like his other two books i liked the first one until the end and the ending was garbage in my opinion and then the second one i didn't like at all <laughs> i really okay. was excited for it it sounded like an amazing premise and then i really did i only it. read the first one and i dis disliked it and never read anything else from it but i'll, re I'll try something okay else. but his okay. premises always sounds like i said the second one like i was even yeah. more yeah. excited than the first one and then i was so disappointed that i didn't enjoy it but like once again the premise i'm like yep that you got me that also sounds interesting <laughs> just like yeah. the first two yes he <laughs> I think his writing got better in the second one, so I'm excited to see if the third one, how it goes. It gets better I mean, it, it's my kind of book, and I gave both of the first two books I read four stars. Like, I had writing problems with both of them, but I liked the overall plots. So, okay. Yeah. So, that way we can be new release. Mm -hmm. Fun. Yeah. He's a little, he's like my, um, my, uh, mystery Adrian Young, where I keep reading his books because the premises keep sounding great, even though I never like them. <laughs> <laughs> and there should, I'm assuming because it's a new release and he's a big author, there should be an audio available, I'm assuming. Right now there yeah. is not. Well, it's not there, out yet. Yeah, it's I not, know, but usually you can pre-order still on Amazon and it doesn't it. exist yet. But I'm yeah. assuming it, it'll come later. Yeah, I'm yeah, surely I'm a enough author it probably will. I'd be surprised. I would be shocked if it didn't. Yeah. Um but it's we not can check in, in yet. Yeah, it would can check in when we meet in April. If it's still not available, I can change it up. You know, it, I'm sure it will. They just don't have it available. It's still coming in May. I guess several months. Yeah. So Okay. So we That's... have the next two. We have spring and summer. Yeah. Then we and just then have uh, the fall. Right. So I'm, I mean, I have a tentative pick. Um, I may, it may change, but currently I'm thinking The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling, which is a sci-fi horror um, that's sort of like surviving alone in a mine with something. Okay. And this I don't is know. what you see in our future, Bethany. I don't think you should plan our future. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to pick a like a futuristic horror book. So yeah, that's so that's kind of what I'm thinking. I may pick a newer release if I see something that I think could fit, but that's so crazy. tentatively penciled yes. in. We'll yes. say that. Yeah. Okay. Well, this one we're sh I'm sorry, Bethany, but I'm picking it. I'm I so I mean, I'm so excited. I think this is great. I love Alona Andrews. I want I something love, campy. It's gonna give yeah. Leanna lots yeah. of chances to be very upset about uses of language. Yeah, I know you're gonna hate it, but you know, I don't think you thought I was gonna like this. So <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I think yeah. Yeah. <laughs> turn about is fair play. It's yeah. a, at least it's like pretty quick to read. It's not like a long. Yes, book, so. this is going to be breezy to read. It yeah. is three hundred and five pages, like, and it is on Kindle Unlimited, which I appreciate. Yeah, so it is. It'll be a quick read, so at least you won't suffer for long. Yeah, because yeah. I did make Leanna read Leona Andrews at one time, and you hated it. <laughs> well, I did. <laughs> to my knowledge, nobody her, her soft pain whisper. But... <laughs> well, you know what? In my defense, I didn't know I had a Leanna, Leona Andrews uh, connection or like a uh, reference until right now. So in my defense, I picked this last year and I, I didn't know. Yeah. But Oh, it says on the back, like I should have actually looked at the book at all. <laughs> but it says also Firefly. I don't know, Leanna, did you like Firefly, the TV show? Okay. Okay. So well, you're going to love this then. At least it, it might have something we are leaping to. Yeah, on. it might be a, a crew of misfit characters. You know so what maybe... also was comped to Firefly is A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, and I despise that book. So, <laughs> oh no, I love that book. <laughs> I, I like I'm it. neutral with it. I, I thought it was fine. I don't yeah. love it or hate it. <laughs> I thought it was, I think that's one where it got a little overhyped to me. Because mm -hmm. people just kept being like, you're going to love it, you're going to love it, you're going to love it. And I was like, I like it. Firefly it's good. or Small Angry Planet? Small Angry Planet. Yeah. 
Um, and yeah, I'm sure like the crew of Misfit, you know, crew of Misfits. I think that's where it's, the Firefly comparison is probably going to end. Yeah. It's, the yeah, island I think of misfit it's just toys. like how anything that has like a battle royale is like this is Hunger Games, and anything that has a crew of misfits is like this is Firefly. Even though <laughs> that concept happened before and after those yeah. stories, not everything yeah, is true. like them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, well I'm, I Hunger think I'll like it, and I'm having a, a good time thinking about reading this. So I'm excited, and you know what? If me and Amanda end up hating it, then we can just all hate it together, which would also be fun. <laughs> You know, that, I mean, either way, I think it'll make for a good. I can't show. wait for all y'all to hate it and me to love it. There you go. <laughs> that would be honestly that'll be the day. Amazing turnaround. I would <laughs> be so excited if that. Ice your bets now, folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what's the ratio of love to hate books for Lana? In the book club or book in book? general? 3070 I mean, sounds about accurate, though. I don't know. Does it? Because I feel like the only time you're I very ever picky. like the book is if I pick it, and I don't even always like the books that I pick, so... That's true. Are you like saying this is generous? Couple, haven't you liked a couple <laughs> yeah. of the horror picks that Bethany had? I feel like... I got you to like Tessa Dare, so I mean, you true. know. So, like, 90-10. <laughs> I was being I mean, generous. I mean, like, you don't hate all of them. Sometimes you're just like, eh, it's fine, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, maybe we could do like like twenty eighty. But also, I feel like that like honestly, all of us have a lot that we are like it was okay, but versus ones we really love. Like I feel like there's always you know have we had yeah. that we that people really loved Guns of the Dawn, like, and I picked it. Yeah, that I really liked Guns of the Dawn. I yeah. was okay I did. about it. <laughs> yeah, I, liked I really that liked one. it. I'm trying to think what else. <laughs> I think the big, well, our first Halloween Oh, Blood in the show. Mist, I liked a lot. Which one? Blood, Blood in, in the Mist. mist. Oh, I love <laughs> that. Movie on the War on Drugs. Amanda didn't <laughs> right. like Blood on Drugs. Oh, loved that's right. That one. Amanda didn't like that one. I like that Any, one. Like, I feel like Blood in the Mist and like Hexwood are like similar in tone. And I'm like, well, this is not <laughs> what I like. Oh, yeah. I know. See, it's so yeah. interesting. Whereas like, I loved Blood in the Mist. Something about, about it like worked for me in a way it was whoville and the war on drugs for me yeah. but it's fine <laughs> like, i didn't hate it i was just you like, say that like it's yeah. a bad thing that sounds like a great pitch to me. i know i have i think i'm describing it in a in a more fun way than it is <laughs> i think um we like i don't know our first, i feel like our, our first like halloween there. show everybody liked Southern Book Club's uh, Guide. it was like didn't they the yeah, Southern Book Club, Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I, yeah, I like. I didn't love it. I I liked it. I thought there was content in the book that didn't need to be there, and it still bothers me to this day that like the graphic sexual assault was in the book because it didn't need to be in there, yeah. and it still fucking bothers me <laughs> to this day. <laughs> that's I think about as good as we've done though. Yeah. Yeah. In terms, I think of that's every book club. It's just you. You can't. You know, because you have people with just always be like who like different things, and that's just it's like, yeah. I mean, all of our tastes were like a little Venn diagram. There is a juicy, like, fudge core yeah. <laughs> that we if, all you know. What, if Tessa Dare ever like. comes out with this book, which just I got another notification just now, it got telling me that it's been pushed to 2026. No, so, I thought we were really gonna get it this year. <laughs> no. You know what? I think I figured it out. Like I, I'm speculating, but I'm like, I feel like Tessa Dare's trying to wait out her contract with Avon Books. I think she's trying to get to a new publisher because there's no reason why this wouldn't be released. Unless oh, she she's might like, just be that's really struggling. Well, because no. she's because she's had some like some health issues that have made yeah. writing difficult for her yeah but i've had it pre-ordered since 2019 like that I, I doubt it wouldn't be done by now can i, I feel tell like you about a book called cold. the doors of stone and how <laughs> you knew what you years... were getting into with that we had no way to know that this was gonna happen with tessa <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm just saying that like to say that 2019 is a long time to wait yeah when Doors of for a romance novel, yes. For a romance <laughs> novel that's like 384 pages. Yeah, that's that's a long time time that wait. is a very long time to wait. Yeah. yeah. But I think she's had health issues, so that's probably why. But maybe she has maybe she has a problem I, with that. I think it's a combo of things, but I'm like, at this point, I'm like, are you waiting out your contract like Cresley Cole? Who didn't mm -hmm. like put out a book for like six years until like her contract was up and she moved to a new publisher? And then she put out a not her best. 
Well, yeah. she also had major health issues. She, she did. did. She, I think, was in a car accident or something. Yeah. yeah. But still, um, I'm like, I don't know. I that I don't. I'm speculating, but I'm like, I feel like, I like that can, as a conspiracy theory. I think that's yeah. a more fun answer. It's going to come out on a different publisher. It's not going to be on Avid Books. That's what I feel like it's going to happen. I would actually love that to be the answer because then she wouldn't be having health issues. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So it could be both. Yeah, it could be both. It could be both. But someday. Yeah, someday. I, all that to say, if it ever comes out, we will drop everything and have Emergency Book Club, I feel like. Because <laughs> we all like that series. So <laughs> that I feel like we well, just agree that whoever's pick is the, the nearest. Whoever is like, yeah. That's nearest what we're doing. Like, <laughs> that's what they're picking. Yeah. They don't get yeah. to I, I want to pull like rank here and be like, I need to have that on my channel. <laughs> That's like, fine. that's what people find me for is Tessa Dare or Anne Rice. You're saying that like my channel things. isn't known for its Tessa Dare content? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm going to so, confidently say Leanna, that. <laughs> Leanna is known as the foremost uh, dare, dare head on. Um, on it, but I'll, like, have you know, I'll have you know that the bodice rippers part of this book club is down to me being a member. So. Yeah. Okay. True. Okay. So the the book club happened a really long time ago, and I was we me and Leanna we were having dinner after like a book signing. I was like, let's do a collab where I'm gonna make you read Bodice Rippers, and I will read anything you want me to read. And that's how it started. And I had her read Tessa Dare. Yeah. So. so and like you made back to your roots, really. And you had me read the blade itself. Yeah. I think and that worked out really well because we both liked those. We yeah. understood the assignment when it came we to We understood the assignment. And <laughs> and <Bodice Rivers. laughs> so we have veered from started. that assignment. Since we have. <laughs> we've kind of come up with like different. I had a silly themes. idea. And then well, now blades, it's like a book club. <laughs> blades could play into murder. Yeah. And for horror. I think I, I think. consistently yeah. choose books that have blades in them. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm Does doing my part. <laughs> well, I guess they had a sword at one point. It has some yeah, sword yeah. In there. Yeah. yeah. I feel like, you know, Blades has just been broadened to en encompass other genres in addition to. Yeah. Them. Well, when y'all pick books that have blades in them, it's never a weapon. And I don't like it. Are you talking about a penis? <laughs> like, is this is a romance. Hey, I <laughs> the, there was no penises talked about in the cask last year. That was my pick. True. True. Well done. True. It was a lot of um, dick measuring, but no, well, there wasn't any. Um... <laughs> you, as in, like a PI? Is that the wordplay we're yeah. going for here? Okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I guess we'll see you guys back for April Calamity on it yeah, yeah. on Amanda's channel Calamity in April. I'm very excited. So <laughs> it'll be a good show. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> at least yeah, at least you don't have to reread it. You don't have to reread it if you don't want. You could just show up. So like I you mean, know, I at the very like, least. But I read it. I already read it like three months ago. By the time I'm gonna have to at least like skim it. Do a skim, which yeah. is fine. It's fine. Yeah. yeah, it was never. It wasn't forever. That's why I held on to my art copies because I knew I might have to. I also have the art copy, yeah. so I'm excited. Still haven't read it because I'm terrible at reading arcs. Hi. <laughs> I read them eventually. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's that then. All right, everybody. Enjoy we'll your you weekends. in April. Yeah. Over here in April. Well, on my channel. That's what I meant yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's invited to Amanda's it. house in April. <laughs> See you there. <laughs> See you there, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.